chapter number four, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, on today I want to talk to you from the subject. Put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward. And for a thing I want to give you, in order for us as disciples to maximize our potential, we must do our best to manage the pitfalls of life and consistently walk in excellence for the glory of God. Put your best foot forward. I want to tell you a story. When my son was 12 years old, he had an opportunity to play basketball for the second best 12 and under team in the state of Indiana. On this team, Sister Millie, there were other young men who were very talented. And all the young men had hopes and dreams of being able to compete one day for Division I or Division II school. If they were able to do this, they would gain notoriety in Northwest Indiana, and also what we call a free ride for their education. But with my son being on such an elite and talented team, and my team ready, he had a lot of opportunities that many young athletes don't have it, and they still don't have it. He had the opportunity, Reverend Slayer, to travel all over the country. And as he traveled all over the country, he had fun with his friends. And he played in a variety of different terms. He was able to grow his basketball IQ through vigorous training intense practices and facing relentless competition. But the high point for most young athletes, whether it be basketball, dance, gymnastics, or track and field, is the opportunity to play for a national championship. Or simply, as they call it, national. By winning a tournament in Indianapolis, Indiana, his 12 and under basketball ball team earned an opportunity to play for the Nationals in Hampton, Virginia. For any young child, this was an opportunity of a lifetime. However, the only that my son had one issue is that he would not give his all in the preparation process which was his training and his practicing. And because he not, did not give it his all, he was not prepared to be successful in these tournaments. The issue that he had was due to the fact that when he started, he had natural skill, but he had some bad habits. And with those bad habits, at a young age, he still found success. But instead of fixing his bad habits, he felt he could just get by. We call this the path of least resistance. And by giving a minimal effort, he still hoped 
to maximize his success. Isn't that just like us? Many times when God calls us to do something, we have a few bad habits. We give minimal effort and we want the maximum success. Take a name, it doesn't work that way. At the national competition, which was a great experience, began to approach. I asked him when we were, we were about six months out, do you want to do anything extra so you can be better equipped for the tournament? His answer was no. I'm good. So every month, I would come and I would ask him, did he want to do anything extra to prepare? And his answer is no. I'm good. Isn't that just like us? You get opportunities to make yourself a better servant. You get opportunities to make yourself a more equipped disciple, but you say, no. I'm good. So when we were about two weeks away from the tournament, Reverend Slater, he decided he was going to do something. Dio Woods, I witnessed him do about four push-ups. Can anybody say, way too little? Way too late? So to make a long story short, when he traveled, to Hampton, Virginia, to play for the national championship, having put in the minimal effort, he had a lot of fun with his friends. But he did not have a lot of success on the court. He did not get the results he desired because he was not prepared. What I'm trying to say my brothers and my sisters, as we engage the discipleship process, we must understand what the goal should be. And the goal is to make disciples of those who are lost. For this to be accomplished, we cannot get into the habit of being lazy and having unproductive bad habits and call ourselves, preparing ourselves to do kingdom work. I want us to understand clearly that when Jesus went out in Galilee, he put his best foot forward. He put his best foot forward, Sister Sharon, so he could maximize the results he wanted to achieve. We cannot bring light to a dark place if we're home resting. We cannot bring light to a dark place if we refuse to study the word. We cannot bring light to a dark place if we refuse to adapt to a new generation. We cannot bring light to a dark place if we simply refuse to grow in God and say, I'm good. Understand that Jesus was equipped. Even though he was 100% God and 100% man, he was equipped so he could be able to maximize his potential as he engaged his assignment. Jesus was prepared and equipped as he went. Jesus was prepared and equipped to teach the truth about God. Jesus was prepared and equipped to preach the good news. So we have to ask ourselves, are we developing ourselves to go out or are we content to take the path of least resistance? 
minds? Are we educating ourselves? And are we allowing ourselves to be educated from an outside source about the truth about God that are found in his word? Are we putting ourselves intentionally in a position to be able to know the good news? To preach the good news? And most importantly, live the good news. Are we trying to do this so we can be agents of change? Or are we just settling to settling just to come to hope? To go to heaven and to simply live our best lives until that time comes. Since we have engaged this gospel account multiple times. We understand that this well-observed and well-researched account of the life of Jesus Christ was written by the apostle Matthew. Matthew, as we know, also goes by the name of Levi. Furthermore, we know that Matthew was a tax collector and he was willing to leave his well-established Galilean tax service and follow Jesus when Jesus' transforming presence was allowed access to the tax collector's heart. This gospel account of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, Deacon Grant, we know is valid. And we understand it is valid because the early church fathers who were trained by the apostles unanimous, unanimously agreed that this book was not anonymous, but it was actually penned by the former tax collector, Matthew. Matthew's objective for this gospel was to give a fascinating and engaging exposition of the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. And it serves as an evangelistic tool to those who are dead in their sins. Matthew's prime objective is to get those who are dead in their sins to experience the new birth and be drawn nearer to Jesus with the understanding that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ yeah, yeah. that came to take away the sins of the world. Not only does this gospel serve as an evangelistic tool, Sister Billy, but it also is a word of encouragement to those who have already experienced the new birth. It reinforces the fact that Jesus is God's Messiah. Yes, yes. And prayerfully, by the teaching of the gospel, the believer will be encouraged and have a desire to grow stronger in Him. We understand by observing this text in its proper context. That Jesus is in the midst of his Galilean ministry. We know that Jesus' ministry here in Galilee gives us the blueprint of how to establish and carry out ministry that gives God glory, draws the unbeliever, and strengthens the believer. When Jesus engaged in his ministry in Galilee, we understand that he does four things. He went, he taught, he preached, and he healed. We understand that this is the blueprint that we are to follow. But what I want us to understand is that in order for Jesus to do these things, Deacon is glad he had to move in excellence. 
Jesus moved in excellence because he had a divine assignment. And Jesus was motivated to fulfill his assignment. Sister Sharon, he was motivated because he was obedient to the Father. And also, he had concerns about the people. When we engage ministry, we must be obedient to the Father and concerned about the people. I know sometimes the people ain't going to do what you want them to do, but we got to be obedient to the Father. And we must care about the people. Sometimes they may talk about you behind your back. We must be obedient to the Father and concerned about the people. They might not always agree with your agenda in the church meeting, but our mandate is to be obedient to the Father and be concerned about the people. Why was Jesus concerned about the people? Because he knew that they dwelled in the land of the shadow of death. And he was the great light that the people needed who were in darkness of mind. My brothers and my sisters, we must be motivated because our desire, like we said, must be to be obedient to God. And we should move in excellence and with gratitude. Gratitude should be our motivating factor. Because we are grateful for the great things that God has done for us. And we should have love for our brothers and our sisters. We move. Sister Lawrence, in this way, so we can bring the light to those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death. It should be our desire to bring the light of life, that's Jesus, to all who dwell in darkness of mind. It should be our desire to bring the light of life to all who are burdened and heavy laden. It should be our desire to bring the light of life to all of those who are lost and discouraged. It should be our desire to bring the light of life to our friends and our families. It should be our desire. Elder Kim, not only to bring the light of life, but to be filled with the light of life. The songwriter simply said, walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come with the dew drops of mercy shine bright. They shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. The simple message on today encourages us to continue to follow the blueprint. But we must understand that we follow the blueprint in the good times and in the bad times. We follow the blueprint in the midst of the storm. And when the sun is shining. Yeah. Amen, amen. My Lord. And we must put our best yes. foot forward. No matter how hard it is. My Lord. We must put our best foot forward. Even when we are rejected and neglected. We must put our best foot forward. In the midst of our struggle and in the midst of our hurt. We must put our best foot forward. When folk do us right and when folk do us wrong. Yes, yes. 
The songwriter declares there are many things about tomorrow. Yes. Think of the light, and I don't see to understand. But see, I know who holds tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. And I know who holds my hand. Now, with all this said, how do we, as disciples, maximize our potential in the midst of the discipleship process? Number one, to put our best foot forward in the midst of whatever life gives us, we must be willing to allow ourselves to be continually equipped. We allow ourselves to be continually equipped so we grow in the truth about the kingdom of God and so we understand the gospel message. Number two, we put our best foot forward in the midst of contrary situations. We must be willing to apply what we have learned as we walk in right relationship with God in right relationship with one another. Point number three, to put our best foot forward uh -huh. in the midst of the temptations that lead us to sin, we must be willing to walk obediently as those who have been redeemed while we endure the hardships of the process. And as we endure the hardships of the process, we must commit ourselves to the fishers of men way of thinking and the fishers of men way of living as we teach the kingdom of God, as we preach the gospel message in the land of the shadow of death. My brothers and my sisters, as diplomats of the kingdom, it is our mandate yes, sir. to move in the righteousness of God with the distinction of being a kingdom citizen. Amen, amen. When the work seems difficult and overwhelming, it is our mandate to move in the righteousness of God with the distinction of being a kingdom citizen. When our comrades and we feel rejected it is our mandate to move in the righteousness of God with the distinction of being kingdom citizens when the burden of the ministry has us weary and dismayed it is our mandate to move in the righteousness of God with the distinction of being kingdom citizens the songwriter says, I came to Jesus just as I was. Yes. I was weary, I was born, and I was sad, but I found in him yes. a resting place, yes. and he has made me glad. Yes, Lord. Yes. Understand, my brothers and my sisters, life will be brutal, and life will be unfair. But we found in him a resting place. Yes. And he yes. has made us glad. Yes. There will be issues that test the core of our faith. But we found in him yes. a resting place. Yes. And he yes. has made us glad. Yes. We won't always see eye to eye. Nor will we always get along. But we must remember we found in him yeah. A resting place, yes, and He yes. has made us glad. Yes, we understand that it's good yes. and it's pleasant for brethren 
determined to dwell in unity because we found in him a resting place and he has made us last. Sickness may try to infiltrate our life and the adversary may try to lock us down but remind yourself that we found in him a resting place and he has made us last. Our faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. Savior, divine. See, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know when the storm is going to end. I don't know when the burdens will be lifted. I don't know when your change is going to come. But one thing, we got to keep on teaching and we got to keep on preaching. No more thinking till we make it. We got to keep on teaching and keep on preaching if we're going to prepare ourselves for the good work. We got to keep on teaching and keep on preaching if we're going to fight the good fight of faith. We got to keep on teaching. We got to keep on preaching. We must have love for God and love for one another. We got to keep on teaching and keep on preaching. We must equip ourselves and allow ourselves to be equipped. We got to keep on teaching. We got to keep on preaching. We must get out of our comfort zone and go to the highway and the byway. We got to keep on teaching. We got to keep on preaching. The songwriter says, the Lord has need of workers to till his field today. So kindly as he led me to walk in wisdom's way, I pray for grace to help me with all my heart to say, Oh, blessed Savior, count on me. Declare on today, we're going to launch out into the deep. Oh, Lord, you can count on me. We are determined to know the truth about the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord, you can count on me. We're going to know the gospel message and live the gospel message. Oh, Lord. You can count on me. We're determined to tell the lost about Jesus. Oh, Lord. You can count on me. We wanted to encourage those who are found to bask in love. Oh, Lord. You can count on me to be light in the dark place. You can count on me to be influenced for your glory. To worship you in spirit and in truth. To love unconditionally. To be a symbol of hope in times of despair. To keep running when we get tired. To deny ourselves. To take up our cross and follow your baby. To say, oh Lord, you can count on me, my brothers and my sisters. 26 years ago, before my daddy took his final seat, he said, there are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, so I can feel him in my soul. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. He's my standing and he made me whole. See, his love for me is like you know. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward. We put our best foot forward. In the midst 
or whatever life gives us. To do that, we must allow ourselves to be continually equipped. To put our best foot forward in the midst of those contrary situations, we must be willing to apply what we've learned. Even when it's not popular, we must apply what we've learned as we walk in right relationship with God and right relationship with one another. To put our best foot forward in the midst of the temptation to sin, we must simply push to walk obediently as those who have been redeemed while we endure like hardships. Yes, God is real. Real in my soul. For he watched and made me hope. His love for me is like he ago. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. God bless you.